record. So we're also re recording today's session. All right, so for today, my name is Josh. Uh, while we give everyone a quick minute to join in, we'll do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, so firstly, a couple of things to keep in mind. The wonderful Cameron who just jumped in then from Griffith uh, is available. So if you have any random questions about Griffith specifically, any questions that you just need an answer to, great person to chat to is Cameron. So what I'd love for all of you to do very quickly is click on the chat function. And in the chat function, you'll see a two button and next to two, it says everyone. Click on the everyone button and then type in, it's like a search bar, type in Cameron and click on Cameron Sherwood and then just send him a little smiley face. Send Cameron a little smiley face. Cameron, if you can just give me a wave if you're blowing up with smiley faces there, beautiful. So that's Cameron. If you have any random questions today, feel free to shoot them through to Cameron. And of course, feel free to jump in the chat. Um, Cam, thumb up or thumb down, is Andrew with us today? Yeah, I'm here as well, Josh. Andrew's here as well. So also, if you could jump into the chat, if you have anything wellness or student support related, the wonderful Andrew is here. If you type Andrew into the chat and send Andrew through a little smiley face, or if you need to send Andrew a sad face and say, hey, can we chat? Can you support me? Um, that is totally okay. So after today, obviously, we've got you for an hour today, another 58 minutes. I want to make it a bit of fun. I want to share with you some things that hopefully will be really, really helpful. Um, we'll give you a bunch of chances to connect with each other. Um, but of course, today brought to you uh, by the Student Guild. So if you're curious, quick, actually quickly, if you click on the participants tab, uh, click the green yes button if you've already uh, followed the Student Guild on Facebook. If you know where the Student Guild website is, click yes. And if you haven't followed the Student Guild, you haven't been to their website, now don't lie, lying's the devil, click no if you haven't. Yes if you have, no if you haven't. Okay, wonderful. So if you haven't yet, check them out. You'll get all the slides and everything, but save this little link that I'm copying into the chat for later. Go to the Guild website, follow them on Facebook, learn about all the amazing good things that are coming up, including these two things, specifically employability workshops. So I'm seeing lots of smiling faces here. So very quickly with all the faces, quick show of hands, just raise a hand if this is true. When you graduate or, get a, or finish your degree, at some point in the future, you would like a job. You'd like someone to pay you to do stuff. Great. So if your hand went up and Debbie's hands like down, she's like, no nah, man, I don't need no job. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, Debbie, I had, to, I had to be someone. I had to know I had the power to call you out. But I love that you took that like a champ. Uh, if hands up one more time, want a job when we graduate or at some point in the future, Debbie's got two. What a rock star. I love it. Love Griffith. So much fun. Um, as you put your hands up, if you would like a job in the future, employability workshops, check them out. They're great. Lots of different uh, facilitators and providers all brought to you by the Guild and also wellness workshops. We know COVID's a tough time. We'll be talking about that today. Um, but if you like some support, meet some people, have some fun. Um, I don't want to speak on behalf of the Guild, but I love the Guild. So if you want to check out those, they're hyperlinked um, and everything linked. Cam or Andrew can give me an all link through the website. Beautiful. All right, let's get into today. Over 60 of you on this session today, I'll give you lots of chances uh, to connect with one another, but very quickly, I'll tell you who the heck am I. So when I went to uni, this is how I thought it would work. You know that whole, we put our hands up if we wanted a job, this is how I thought it would happen. Go to uni, get good grades, get a job. Now that's what I was kind of expecting and that's what school taught me. I was a good little boy and I got a gold star and I did everything right. And then I got to uni and I realized that's not exactly how it works. You're at a great uni doing great degrees. And if the outcome of today's session is you drop out of uni, that'd be very, very bad. And I would never get invited back again. That is not the point of today. Going to a great uni, getting a great degree, I honestly believe is an amazing investment and a pretty cool opportunity that we get to do that. But there's a lot more to uni than just being in a classroom or being in an online classroom. And for me, when I was at university, one of the things that I realized on my path to getting a job was I did 10 different volunteering roles, a whole bunch of different things from I ran a student cookbook, some fundraisers, and I ended up being involved in clubs and societies at the end. Um, quick show of hands, give me a quick wave. If you're already a member of a club or society at Griffith University, can you raise your hand? And if you're not yet a member of a club or society, can you give me a quick little wave? Not yet a member? Awesome. Worth adding to your to-do list. Uh, if you go to the website, you'll see all the links for clubs and societies, student-run groups, by students, for students, employability, social, networking, heaps of online stuff worth checking out. And it wasn't until I did 10 of those roles that I ended up um, eventually getting a job. Now, evidently I'm not working as a civil engineer right now, but what happened in between was I didn't really spend enough time thinking about where I wanted to go long-term in life. And I sort of thought, oh, if I just, I'll be happy when I become an engineer. 
And what I realized was, I wish I'd done a little bit more of that thinking earlier. So over a couple of different career changes and now being 29, um, I now have the great pleasure of running my own business, which is a complete change um, called Campus Consultancy. And working with Griffith today is amazing. And we're really about two things. The first is connecting, bringing students together to give you a chance like this to hopefully um, learn a few things and meet each other. Um, I will leave this workshop, my voice will leave your head, um, but you will likely connect and stay connected with all the people you meet here today and throughout your time at Griffith. So that's huge. Second thing we're really about is developing, giving you some tangible skills and frameworks, things you can practically use. Uh, my opinion, just my opinion, if you invest an hour of your time with us here today, you could be doing literally an hour of anything else. You could be working a job, you could be watching Netflix, you could be furiously swiping right on Tinder or Hinge or Bumble or I don't know, whatever you kids are using these days. Boys and girls, young and old, whatever you're using, you could be doing literally anything else with your time, but you're here. So it'd be a pretty bad use of your time if you left this hour going, I wish I didn't go to that thing. So it's my job, I'm setting the bar low, I'm setting the bar really low today. It's my job to make sure you don't leave here in an hour and go, that was a complete waste of time. Um, so we wanna make sure this is valuable and kind of fun and, and practical. So that's everything that we're about at campus. Uh, my life used to look like this. I was hit by COVID as well. Um, very much looked like this. I was on campus running around, having a good time. And now it looks like this on Zoom, but we won't let that stop us. So great to be back with Griffith today. We've had the great pleasure of working with 32 different universities, three state governments, a bunch of different nonprofits and orgs, 11 and a half thousand students, trying to pass on the things that I wish somebody kind of grabbed me by the ear when I was starting uni and said, hey, you should really think about a couple of these things. Um, so whether our days sometimes go for eight hours and today we've got you for an hour, um, we'll try to make it fun and pretty interactive. So that's where we're at. 73 of you on, which is awesome. Um, Cam's linked in the chat function as well, where you can find all the clubs and check those out. You get a ton of hyperlinks today. Um, treat them as a resource. Maybe after today, if you have half an hour, get a cup of coffee, sit down, go through all the notes. I'll send you out everything immediately. Um, so you've got access to it. Um, but try to be as present in this as you can. So if you've got one of these on you right now, you probably won't need it this session. If you can put it on silent or put it under the desk or take it away, that'd be great. If you've got a bunch of other tabs open, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, if you could close them down or at least minimize them. And let's just see if we can do this one, this one hour together for the next 52 minutes of it. All right. So I've boiled down what I want to pass on to you today. I'm going to be try to be speedy, stick bang on time is pass on nine principles, nine concepts, frameworks, things that I think will be helpful. Things that I wish that I'd sort of spent a little bit more time thinking about at university um, and things that will hopefully give you a bit of an edge um, to stand out in the future and also just to make the most time, most of the time that you're at uni. So I'm gonna start with the first one. And to have this conversation, I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms, but here's my first question. First one is, why are you here? What are you here for? What do you want to get out of university? So if you clicked your fingers and you were at the end of your degree, where would you go? What would you do? And for some, this is a great space and place of time to think and contemplate and try things and see what you like and don't like. My first question for you today is, if you had unlimited money with only two rules, so you had $10 billion or make up a number, two rules. One, you can pay yourself whatever you want. So imagine you've graduated, all those hands went up, you will work somewhere for someone or for yourself. Um, you can pay yourself whatever you want. You want to pay a million dollars, fine. Imagine you're being paid a million dollars, doesn't matter. But you have to actually do something. I tried retiring, sitting on a beach, I got bored. If you're on this workshop right now, you'll be bored sitting on a beach forever. It'll be fun for a week, you'll be bored after a month. I tried it. But imagine you had got given unlimited money, unlimited resource, you could hire as many people as you want, but you had to work towards some problem in the world. You had to try to solve something, you had to chip away at something. What's a problem? Or what's something that you would care about that you would like to work towards? And say arbitrarily for five years, you were going to give yourself to a problem. It's COVID related, non-COVID related. It might be homelessness. It might be education. It might be healthcare. Um, it might be you want to start a tech startup and solve a particular problem. If you could solve absolutely any problem in the world, what would it be? So rather than just the standard, what's your name? Where are you from? What are you studying? For this first activity today, I'm going to pop you into a couple of breakout rooms. And when you're in these rooms for the next few minutes, I'd love you to talk about this question. Imagine each of you was sitting on a $10 billion check and you had to work towards something. You could use your skills, you could bring people in, you had to chip away at some problem in the world. If that was true for you, what would that problem be? Breakout rooms are opened up. You have three or four minutes, jump on in, turn those cameras on, mics on. If you had unlimited resources, what would you work on? 
What's a problem that you care about? Something you're passionate about or connected to? Should have a notification there to join the breakout room, jump on in, say hello, introduce yourself. If you had unlimited resources, all the resources in the world, what problem would you work on and why? And as you're trickling in, if you're still hearing my voice, you should either have a notification or if you move the cursor around, click on more down the bottom, go up to breakout rooms, give you an option to join the breakout room. Jump on in, a bunch of people there waiting to meet you and hear from you. Very, very good. 10 or so still with me here. So you should have an invite to the breakout room. Make sure you're just jumping on in. Beautiful. Just hit the recording again now that we're all back. Um, so we'll, uh, first we'll start with Gavin. Gavin, love to hear from you. What came up for you, my friend? I would probably solve the Great Pacific garbage patch and cool. try and eradicate all the, the waste that's uh, gathering in the ocean. Awesome. And why do you think that came to mind for you? Uh, I just hate people dumping their rubbish and what it does to uh, marine life. And yeah, I'd just love to solve it. Awesome. Cool. Um, and if you check out some of the different groups at Griffith, I'm sure you'll find a couple of different groups who are working towards that in different ways as well, if you have not already. Yep, yep, I'll have a look. Awesome. <clears throat> Thanks, Gavin. Uh, who else clicked yes on here? Kaylee, uh, oh, no, we, had, we had Kaylee before. Yeah, Kaylee, feel free, share it with the group. That'd be great. Um, solving coral bleaching. Coral bleaching? Yep. And you were saying, why did that come to mind for you? Because um, I grew up in like, on the reefs, um, fishing, camping, um, all that sort of stuff. So it's a pa big passion of mine and I'm studying a Bachelor of Science major in marine biology. Good fit, beautiful. Thanks for sharing, Kaylee. And then Luke, maybe I'll jump over to you, my friend. The last one. Luke Cuff, what came up? You just have to unmute yourself, my man. Uh, there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome, yeah, I was very similar to the first one. Uh, more down the plastic line as well. Cool. Yeah, I love it. Well, I love the sustainability vibe. That's awesome. And I think for today, one of the things that we want to start on is one of the things as you go into university, as you continue with university is I'd love to encourage you to think about this question. What's this all for? It's very, I mean, there's lots that uni has to offer, but very often we work with lots of students who get to the end of their degree and it's like, I don't really know where to next. They don't have a vision for their life. So for something that might be worth thinking about, even in the tough times, even the tough exams, the tough subjects, if you've got something that's bigger than you, particularly if it's a cause, I think it's a great thing to orient by. Now that might change. You might explore three or four causes. Some people say, oh, Josh, this is too hard. I care about 10 things. That's amazing. But pursue one or two of them or three of them at a time. Check them out, explore them. Find a group that does them. So one of the things that's guaranteed is even from those, uh, those three individuals who just shared there, and I thank you for it, there were some clear similarities. You know, you'll probably find people on this call who have similar interests to you. And if you look in the whole Griffith University and the alumni community, you'll find lots and lots of people who do. So I'd encourage you as you look around, you join your groups, you join clubs, you get involved in events, look for your tribe, find others who share that vision with you. It's, even the best of us aren't gonna get there alone. And the big social changes that we see happening in the world and have seen for hundreds of years, very rarely carried out and executed solely by an individual. Maybe small groups of people, very Margaret Mead style, but also groups of people coming together. So you need an amazing place to do that. Starts with a little bit, I believe, of introspection and why are you all here? Second thing. So the first thing is the idea of vision. The second thing is that's a bit big. So let's bring it down in scope a little bit. So for the second activity, it is by far undoubtedly the weirdest part of today. So you're just gonna have to, you're gonna have to roll with me on that. So as you do that, I'd like to sit nice and straight up in your chair. So if you've got a bit of a slouch on, time to sit up nice and straight, if possible, whatever straight and comfy in your chair means for you. And for the second activity, the second thing I wanna talk about, I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes. So if you would please be so kind, everyone's gonna do it, everyone's gonna feel weird. Could you please close your eyes? And you'll have your eyes closed just for a minute or two. Now, every time we do this, there's someone with their eyes open and you have beautiful eyes and I don't need to see them for this little activity. Wonderful, cool. I want you to imagine that when I click my fingers, it's the 7th of January, 
2021. We're one whole, sorry, we're six months into the future. And you're through this upcoming trimester, we're through this year, touch wood, the COVID world has sort of settled down a little bit. With your eyes closed, I'd just like you to entertain the question. For this to be an amazing six months, for this to be six months that were not just better than the first six months, but twice as good, five times as good, 10 times as good. What would have to change or what would you want to experience between today and the 7th of January, 2021? What's something that you might start doing? What's something you might stop doing? What's something that you would like to be different six months from now? Don't think about how you're going to get there. Don't think about all the logical reasons for why it's too hard. But if you could just magically click those fingers and it was six months in the future, what would you like to be different? I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to entertain the thought and then I'll bring you back. Ten more seconds. You're there. It's six months from now. If one thing in life could be different, it would be what? What do you want to experience? What do you want to try? What do you want to achieve? Awesome. Thank you very much. You can open up your eyes. Now bring you back into the present very quickly. Arms nice and high up above your head. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing two men style and wave them around like crazy. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing two men. Very good. Arms over to the left. Don't hit the cat. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And over to the right. Don't hit the cat. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Very good. Very, very good. Alrighty, loosen up those fingers, jump into the chat down below or over to the side. I love some people did this as well. That's wonderful. Uh, jump into the chat down beside and just type it out. First thing that came to mind, no judgment. What would you like to be different? Is it paying off the credit card? Is it going on an exchange overseas? You know, borders bearing. If it's good health, travel, spend time with family, get paid to write. I love that. You know what I want to do with my life? Very cool. Make new friendships, be healed have the ultimate success. I love that. You know, like dream big, right? If you're going to dream big, what do I want in six months? I want the ultimate success. Okay. That's cool. I want to be living on the Gold Coast. I want to get my own place. I want to move to Queensland, be more disciplined, volunteer in Marine, get over my fear of driving. That's cool. I love that. A New York ski trip, New Year's ski trip, New York ski trip. Not a lot of mountains in New York. I'm going to assume that means New Year's, better time management, achieve high grades, surrounded by great people. Be happy with my new process in university as it's my first time. Cool, I love that. Have confidence in my ability to succeed. Change my mindset. Feel like I'm dedicating myself to something. Beautiful. And the last one, expand my social circle. Meet new people. Cool. Peace, stress. This is probably the best answer I've ever read. Peace, less stress, and win the lotto. Smiley face. I love it. Very cool. More friends. Quick, I love that I'm noticing these comments in here. Expand my social circle, meet new people, new friends. Quick show of hands if you would like to make at least one new friend in the next six months. Like that would be good. Okay, cool. Notice all the hands up, almost every single hand. As we look forward, that second thing I want to talk about are goals and being clear on what we want. Yeah, we have this big vision. What might we want to work with in life? What's a problem bigger than ourselves? But then bringing it back to one kind of order of magnitude, 
and saying, what do we want to be different in our life? We can change lots of things. Personal belief of mine, if we want things to change, we need to change. We've done this whole bunch of different things and we've ended up in this position. Some of them amazing. Like you've had to do amazing things. I don't know what people have had to sacrifice or be through to be here today. And so I really want to congratulate you for being here today. And also if we want to go to that next level, what's that next thing that we need to take on or challenge or push ourselves through? What's that barrier of fear that we could confront this trimester? What's that event we could go to? What's that hobby we could pick up? What's that place we want to volunteer that we could really have a crack at? If you really want to move somewhere, could that move happen? What would it take for that to happen? So very quickly in the chat, I'd like you to type in just two more things, two quick answers. We're doing this very quickly, but to bring this to life, this kind of change, six months, to bring this to life over the next six months, what's one thing you might start doing and one thing you might stop doing that would help you move in that direction? It wouldn't get you there. I'm not saying you get there in two steps, but... What's one thing that if you started doing that, you think you'd get closer? And one thing, like, you know what? If I just stopped doing that, I'd have more time for this other thing. I'd free up my mental space. Or if I took better care of myself, or if I spent time with that person who motivates me, or spent time with that person who cares for me and loves me, or if I didn't say no to the things that I wanted to. You've got to throw a positive in there too. So what's the thing that you want to stop doing? And then what's that thing that you're going to start doing? What's that thing you might try? Anthony asked for help. I love that. Less coffee dates. Lol. Good for Sammy. Join a new club. Get involved with social events. Be more social. Be more social, less social media. I like that. That's a good one. Stop procrastinating. Start achieving small goals. Cool. Healthy mindset, less junk food. Cool. Seeing some great things in there. Self-care. We'll talk about that a little bit today. Some things like see a psychologist, take better care of myself, anything wellness related as well. Uh, make sure we're steering towards, and I just want to make sure I recommend you to the right expert in the house, wellness towards Andrew as well. So any questions wellness related, um, checking in with Andrew here, who's in the chat as well. So if you want to be steered in a direction, how can Griffith support you? Make sure you make that touch point today in the session. And of course, beyond that, going to the guild, going to the website, looking at support services, everything in between. Asking for help and being more social. No more McDonald's, Mo says. I like it. Um, some of the more practical time management, um, stop procrastinating, some of those work hobbies, great place to go, employability series to go more in depth. Um, and when it's more the wellness stuff, look at the wellness series there. See how the Guild and what's already offer could help you. Layla says, start doing the damn thing. I love that, my friend. That's very cool. So step one, bigger vision. What's the big thing? Step two for today. What's that goal? What's something that was realistic that we could achieve this year? And maybe after today, you go away and turn that into a smart goal. Just very quickly, if you click on the participants tab down the bottom, um, heard of smart goals? Yes or no? Click yes if you know what smart goals are. No if you, we don't know what smart goals are. Yes if we do. No if we don't. Just in that participants tab. So out of two thirds, yes. One third, no. About 50 50. So very quickly, when we're looking at smart goals and they're in the notes, S for specific. M for measurable, A for actionable. Can we have our starts and stops? R for realistic and T for time bound. So after today, maybe that big thing, that, that thing that came to mind when you shut your eyes, we give ourselves five seconds away from an Instagram feed. Thing that comes up from a subconscious to a conscious level. When that comes to mind, it's making it specific, making it measurable, making an action plan um, without beyond kind of the scope for the hour we have today. But if you're interested in any of that stuff, I'll send you through, I'll, I'll link a PDF to the email I send you out afterwards, which has like a goal setting framework. So if you want to run through that by all means. Cool. All right. Third step. So let's keep moving. Third step I want to go into today is, and I'm going to share with you on the slides. Third step for today is being yourself. So one of the things we want to make sure is Griffith is full of amazing, weird, wacky, and wonderful people from amazing different backgrounds, all different levels of experiences, ages, nationalities, um, all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that we want to make sure is that you really lean into being yourself and who you are and express that and figure out what that is. So what does that mean? So I'll give you a really practical example. Quick show of hands if you know who Brene Brown is. Give me a little wave if you know who Brene Brown is. Give me a wave if you love Brene Brown also. Okay, cool. Give me a quick show of hands if you have no idea who Brene Brown is. Okay, great. If you don't, if you write down one name from this whole session, write down Brene Brown, B-R-E-N-E, 
brown, spelt the traditional way. Brene Brown is amazing. She's a gangster. She's from Texas. She's written, I think, six New York Times bestselling books. She's one of the top 10 TED Talks of all time. Uh, her Netf Netflix literally created a brand new category for her. Very, very cool. And she studied shame and vulnerability and guilt for years. And one of the most striking things in her research and what she found was that from the research, from the experience for how people actually feel, the opposite of belonging is fitting in. We don't want you to fit in. We want you to feel like you belong. And they're really, really different things. We want you to feel like you can be you, like you can experiment, you can try stuff and fail. You can sign up for a club, go to two events and go, no, nah, it's not for me and back out. You can pivot and change degrees slightly one year in if you need to. That if you're struggling, you don't alone and you don't hide that, but you say, hey, Andrew, what were those wellness services? I think actually this is the time for me. Or, you know, I think I've got a friend who, I think this is the time for them. And so for you, I'm really interested of what it would mean to belong, what it would mean for you to make this space yours. And in an online environment, sometimes it can be challenging, but it can be done. And so one way to do that is today you're in this session with 70 other people, 70 new potential friends and family members at Griffith. So when we're not all, don't have the benefit of all being physically together, one of the things we want to make sure is if you meet someone cool, you hear an interesting idea or you see something in the chat, you don't leave this session today and, and lose touch with everyone that you meet here. So I thought one way we could do that, one way you could learn and express and figure out a little bit more about each other is to share a little bit so we can stay in touch after today. Now, again, we're only 30 minutes in. We've got another 30 minutes, so stick with me. Um, but one of the things I thought that might be cool is what if we shared a couple of resources and only what you're comfortable sharing such that others can know a little bit more about us. So if you're comfortable, I'm just going to post in the chat and I'll ask everyone just not to post in the chat for two seconds. So everybody can click on this link. Now, if you copy and paste that link or click on this link, you should be able to hyperlink through and it's going to bring you through. So just in the chat is that link. It's going to bring you through to a spreadsheet. Now in this spreadsheet, only what you're comfortable sharing, but if you're on Facebook, if you're on LinkedIn, if you're on Instagram, TikTok, whatever you're using, if you're comfortable sharing a couple of different links, connecting with a couple of different people who are here today, having them connect with you and you connect with them, feel free to grab a row. Don't everybody go to row number two and write over Ashley, but you might go down to row 20. I might type my name in row 20. And just as a quick break, open up those other tabs that I just asked you to shut five seconds ago and drop in if you're comfortable connecting with others, put in your Facebook link, put in your LinkedIn, you can pop in an email in there, people will figure it out. Put your Instagram handle in there. If you'd like to share a little bit, if you've got a blog, if you've got a YouTube channel, if you've got, oops, someone's scribbling on the screen there. Well, I said be you. So if you want to scribble on the screen, that's totally fine as well, as long as it's productive. But if it's your TikTok, if it's your email, if you've got a YouTube, if you've got a blog, if you've got a fire podcast that we all should be listening to and subscribe to. If you'd be willing with, to connect with people, pop it in. And then after today, and this, will, this link will stay live as well. So by all means, you don't have to go and find everyone and add everyone right now and go, oh my gosh, Luke's got amazing hair. I've got to add him on Instagram and figure out how he keeps that amazing hair going. Like you can do that after today. But if you would like to connect and continue those relationships online in a social setting, by all means. Now, no doubt, um, the Guild has many other ways you can do that. But in the idea of embracing what makes you you, what makes you unique, if you are comfortable connecting with people, sometimes it can be really nice seeing what they've done and put out in the world. So by all means, just take a quick 30 seconds or so, pop in any links that you'd like to have in there. And we'll keep moving. Nice, very nice. Cool. While you're on those platforms to make sure you're checking out all the guilds, different profiles and pages, staying up to date with all their events, wellness series, employability series, everything in between. Cool. 
15 seconds left. Pop one or two more handles in if you need. You can come back to this later. Check a, check a few people out. And then don't be afraid to connect, especially on these different platforms. If it's Facebook, if it's LinkedIn, if it's Instagram, by sort of entering it in this forum, I'm hoping that's a, an open invite to accept respectful invitations, of course. Don't forget all students and sign codes of conduct and things like that. Um, but also if you do connect, send a message, send that, send that respectful sort of comment or message and say, hi, we're in the session together. Love your photo, love this video, great take on this. Um, take it beyond just that follower and really engage and see if you can add a little bit of value to one another and get to know each other. For so many who put their hand up and said, I like a new friend, I made a new connection, I wanna meet more people in the next six months. I think people are the entire game. So if out of today you make a few new friends, that's awesome. All right, let's keep moving. 25 minutes left. A few things that I think will really help make the most out of this time and particularly this trimester, given some of the challenges that are happening right now. And I go a little bit deeper on sort of like concepts here and hopefully um, that's okay and will all stay with me. So the fourth thing, fourth thing is something called a growth mindset. Now, if you've heard of a growth mindset, give me a quick wave. If you haven't heard of a growth mindset, don't wave at me right now. That's okay, perfect. So a growth mindset, really good book by Carol Dweck. And at the end of this PowerPoint, I've got a whole bunch of different books, Ted talks, things that you might want to check out if you're interested in going a little bit deeper. Um, but a growth mindset essentially says things can change. A growth mindset says I can change. I can be better. I can put more effort into things. And if I want my finances to change six months from now, if I learn enough, do enough, sacrifice enough, I can get there. If my grades aren't what they are. If my first assignment, if I put in more effort, if I change my approach, I can get there. And this little graph that's on the screen was a study done, one of my favorite studies. And it compared two different groups of teachers who had two different groups of pupils. And one group, they had a group of teachers and they were the best teachers in the whole precinct. And those teachers got the best students in the whole precinct. Second group, standard group of teachers, standard group of students. And they compared the difference in their IQ at the end of the year. And the group that's the slidey lines saw, which is the group that had the best teachers in inverted brackets and the best students in inverted brackets or commas, had marked increases in IQ. Heaps went up 10 points, heaps went up 20 points, heaps went up 30 points. The kicker with this study was the teachers were no better in either group. They were completely randomly selected. The students were no different in either group. They were completely randomly selected. The only difference between these two groups was that one group were told and believed they were better teachers and had students with more potential. Beliefs produce outcomes. So as you go into this trimester, if our belief system going into this is, well, COVID happened and it's online and it's going to be, it's going to be too hard and it's not fair and the government's doing this and the borders are doing this and it's challenging, no doubt. Like friends in all areas around my apartment all lost jobs and were made redundant. But that belief of what we do next is everything. And so what this study showed is if you, as corny as it sounds, if you believe that you can push through it, you can find the clubs, you can make friends online because true or false, at the end of this trimester, there will be people who have gone to university, maybe not Griffith, maybe other universities and made zero friends this trimester. True or false? Show me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. True or false? They've made no friends. Great. And of those, will some of those people say the reason I made no friends is because we're not on campus and we're studying online. True or false? Do you think some people might say that? True. Are there also going to be people at the end of this trimester who knew zero people coming in and made friends online? True or false? 100%. So what's the difference? If we know it's possible, if we believe that like, okay, we're online, these are the constraints of the system. This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make friends online. How do you do that? I don't know, I'm gonna figure it out. It was weird to do internet dating 15 years ago and now we're all about it. Like we change, we're adaptable. So in that same way, this semester, if it's our grades, if it's studying, if it's doing exams, if it's social events, if it's networking, if it's getting a job, if we believe that we can do it, it's gonna make a massive, massive difference. And remember at the start, my whole job, my whole entire business was flying to the Gold Coast from where I live in Melbourne, meeting Cam and Andrew, finding the room, setting up the room, running the workshop, figuring out the AV, getting the microphone to work. My entire business spent years building was in online, in camp, oh sorry, on campus delivery. Plane shut down and went like zero, from all that to zero overnight. So we adapt, like we need to adapt. 
because things are changing. And when we graduate, the workforce is changing quicker than ever. So that mindset of, if I believe I can do it, you have at least a higher chance of doing it. Second thing that goes with that, crucial, sounds brutal, but so, so helpful. And honestly, I think if there's one nugget from today that I'd love for you to really internalize, it'd be this. Sounds odd, it's called an internal locus of control. Two things, one is it's someone else's fault and someone else is responsible for my life changing. The other is I'm responsible for my life changing. Now there's a fine line here, there's a fine line. Is life always fair? No. Is life easy? No. Are we responsible for making the best of what we've got? My belief, yes, 100%. So when it comes to this, an internal locus of control says, I'm going to choose not to find the blame in different situations. I'm going to choose to find the upside. I'm gonna to choose to find the opportunity. If something goes wrong, I'm gonna see that as a challenge and a chance to grow. I'm responsible for things getting better in my life. We're all doing backflips around COVID and money and things like that. Before COVID, 40% of Australia lived paycheck to paycheck. I've been there, grew up in the country, like didn't have a ton of money, I've been there. But this pre-COVID, 40% of us were living paycheck to paycheck. And then COVID happens like, oh my gosh, COVID, money. Now, this is a problem before, it's exposing problems. So when it comes to this, an internal locus of control through uni, if we're in a group project and we have a tough group member, it's like, okay, it's a chance to learn how to work with challenging people. Is anyone on this call right now coming back to uni having worked in the workforce? Anyone been in the workforce full time? True or false, you're going to work with challenging people. <laughs> See the nods? It's like the, screw, the bubbles are about to pop. Everyone's nodding away, right? You, challenging people don't stop after group projects, right? We're going to come across them, right? Bless them. You know, none of you have ever been challenging people in the team, right? But others have, and we're going to come across more of those people as, again, right? So this says, what can we control? What can we do? What's within our power? And I'm not a religious person, but a little serenity prayer. If I can't change it, I got to leave it. If I can change it, give me the courage to do it, or at least give me the courage to give it a try. I'm pretty sure that's a literal exact translate, translation, but perhaps not. All right, fifth one, internal locus of control. It's huge. If you're into this sort of stuff, there's some great, great books out there. Jocko Willink wrote a book, great book called Extreme Ownership. There's tons out there that just say, what happens when you go, I'm 100% responsible for this? It's terrifying, but it's super empowering, as weird as that sounds. Next one, which goes, uh, which kind of completes the triplet here, bravery. So this is very much leaning on Brene Brown's work that I mentioned before. I think it's a Winston Churchill quote, which is, fear is inevitable and bravery is a choice. Two of the richest human beings in Australia, and I don't think rich equals happiness by all means, I'm 29 and thankfully I've learned that lesson. But two of the richest Australians in Australia run Atlassian, a computer company. One of the, they used to go to my uni, old uni. And one of them gave a TED talk. Has anyone heard of Atlassian? Anyone know what Atlassian is? Okay, huge computer company in Australia, whatever. Two guys who run it. One of them gave a TED talk and it was about imposter syndrome. And he talks about how despite running one of the biggest companies in the country, despite being a billionaire, he sits in the Qantas lounge and feels like he doesn't belong. And some of you might be going, well, poor him sitting in the Qantas lounge feeling like he doesn't belong, right? But it doesn't discriminate. Some of us get to uni and I grew up in the country, went to uni, I was a, the bright kid in my class and got to uni and I was like, oh, you're, you're not so special now, are you, buddy? It was very humbling. But I didn't feel like I belonged there. Some people don't feel like they belong in the workplace, they don't belong in the team, don't belong in the group project. There's tons of support. But this concept of when he gave this talk, and maybe I'll link it, I'll send it through in the email afterwards. And he gets on stage and says, I have everything that society says is success and I don't feel like I belong. I'm waiting to get caught out. I'm waiting for someone to tell me you don't deserve this. You don't belong here. You don't fit in. It doesn't go away. Fear is inevitable, but bravery is a choice. All the growth we will have as students at Griffith is going to come from when we push through that fear line. Because when we don't, when we stay within it, we're in our comfort zone. We're in a place where we're safe. We're in a place where we don't have to go outside our boundaries. We kind of know how this kingdom works. There's a deep, dark forest over there. I'm sure there's a dragon in it. Don't tell me about the pot of gold on the other side. I do not want to deal with that right now. I'm staying in my little kingdom. And all these stories and the mythology that we have, Shrek was happy in his swamp, my friends. Very happy. And then an annoying donkey came along. And the last thing he wanted to do was leave the swamp. With a princess and the pot of gold, which is a very old and outdated sexist, concept but we'll leave that for today 
all that goodness, the ultimate goodness in life is on the other side of the deep, dark, scary forest. Now I'm not saying, like, did he just say Griffith University is a deep, dark, scary forest? Not at all. I'm saying is it's going to offer you in unexpected places, chances to wander into some places that scare you, to go to the social event when you don't know anybody, to go to the networking event when you log in and everybody's 18 and you're not, or everyone's got a PhD and you're 18. It's terrifying on both ends. Everyone's wanting to make friends. Everyone has a little bit of that. Is this where I really belong? But I encourage you is when you come up against that, that thing that scares you, that thing that intimidates you, that thing that doesn't quite feel right just yet, know that we're all experiencing it. And everyone's experiencing it. And everyone through history who stood up in front of a crowd and said, I've got a dream, I wanna change the world, was terrified. And that fear doesn't go away, but hopefully as we go through these years together, we become more brave together. Does that make sense? So you're like, okay, it sounds good. What does that actually mean? The next time you're offered an opportunity and the easy answer is to say, oh no, I don't know if that's for me. I don't know if I like that. Just say yes. Say yes five times to five things. Be respectful, take care of yourself, value your self-care and all that sort of stuff. Say yes to the first five things that you're not sure about. Go along to that event, RSVP. Just see, see if you meet someone. The universe is funny like that. All right, the seventh one. Seventh one, I was going to, going to play you this video. You know what? I'm going to. We're going to make it work. To do this, I need to share sound. Has anyone ever seen this video before? Has anyone ever seen the basketballs being passed between the players? Okay, Mo, don't ruin this for everybody. Everybody else, I'm going to share this screen with you. This one is called Control Your Focus. Now, can someone, when I play this, just give me a quick thumbs up and let me know if the sound is working. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball. Pay attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball. All right, who's good? Jump into the chat. What's the answer? Correct answer, correct answer, correct answer. Type it in the chat, type it in the chat. I'm seeing lots of 16, 16, 16, 16s, 15s. Ooh, we've got some different answers. We've got a 17, 14. All right, let's see. The correct answer is 16 passes. Did you spot the gorilla? Quick show of hands. Did anyone not see a gorilla? Is anyone like, what gorilla? All right, pay attention. For people who haven't seen or heard about a video like this before, about half missed the gorilla. If we scroll back. See the gorilla in the middle of the stage? About halfway through, Person in a gorilla outfit walks across, beats his chest, assume it's a he, walks off the other side. Now, who did see the gorilla? Who did see the gorilla? Awesome. What color is that curtain in the background right now? What color was it at the start? Ah, thought you were clever, didn't you? Someone jump off mute and tell me, what do you think the point is of this little video? When you're counting the balls and all of a sudden there's a gorilla and the curtain's changing colors. And for bonus marks, you probably didn't, I don't know if anyone saw, but one of the group members dropped out as well halfway through. You'll you're come so across it. On one thing that you're missing everything else that's happening. Bingo. Type in the chat, if you, didn't, if you don't decide this trimester to control your focus, what do you think it's easy to spend way too much time focusing on? that doesn't ultimately serve you. Type it in the chat. What's something that if you don't control your focus and you just let the mind go, maybe where the news tells you to go or without being conscious of what's in it for the long term, where do you think your mind might go? 
negativity, stress, negativity, perfection, yes, stress, overthinking, overthinking, fear. Also, stress is just a high achiever word for fear. So if you're stressed out, afraid of something, procrastination, self-image, camping, Gavin. I want to hang out with Gavin. When Gavin's like too focused, he goes camping. I like this. This is cool. Peer pressure, sleeping, procrastinating, that big bucket of things. So as you go through this year, and we've got 10 minutes left, and you go through this trimester, one of the most powerful things I think we can do is control what we focus on. Now, how do we do that? We control firstly what goes in our eyes and in our ears. We choose whether we wake up in the morning, we watch the news, and we're like, how many people are sick and dying today? Like, not a great way to prime your day, right? We choose whether we watch that. We choose whether we come to the workshops and we engage, we learn from different speakers. And like, you might come to this workshop and go, that Josh guy, like, I like that one thing he said, but I disagree with those other three things. Like, that's okay. That's what uni's for. Hear lots of different speakers. Don't hear it from one guy who's got one life experience. Go to lots. See what you agree with, what you don't. Are we listening to podcasts? Are we listening to the radio? Are we reading books? Are we scrolling social media? We control what goes in our eyes. We also control what we focus on depending on what we value most. So if that $10 billion question, if those goals at the end of the year, the reason I believe why goals are so important, they narrow our focus. If we say, you know what? I really just want to go camping in the next six months. I really just want to make friends. Then those opportunities to go to networking events start to pop up and we pay attention to them. Has anyone ever had that experience of you buy like an item of clothing or you buy a car or you, you do something and then all of a sudden you see it everywhere? All of a sudden, like everyone's wearing the same sunglasses I just bought yesterday. How did they know the store wasn't so full? So you see it. We've experienced it. We've focused on it. We've made often a financial decision and we see it everywhere. So for us, what we value, what we're headed towards, will control our focus and literally what goes in our eyes and ears. So after today, one of those things, if you catch yourself in the scroll, if you feel like one of the big things that'll come up this semester, you'll see them advertised, time management, motivation sessions. How do we focus on our studies? Well, if you ask people, where does your time go? They're like, oh, that's easy, Netflix and Instagram. Like, okay, well, how do we limit those things? How do we make sure that if we want to get to the end of this trimester and we're in a better place academically, financially, in our careers, that's what we're putting our time and our energy into. And we might miss the big gorilla, but hopefully there's no random gorillas walking into any of your classes or Zoom sessions. If there is, that'd be weird. That'd also be a great prank, although I don't recommend it, but I don't know if anyone would get like the social psychology reference. So you might not get the laughs. You might just get kicked out. But what might happen is we might lose touch with our support networks. We might lose touch with our friends from home, our old coworkers. I noticed so many people put their hands up and said they're returning to work or our friends or our family or our colleagues or our peers. So as we go through the weeks, as we go through the trimesters, be conscious of where you're spending your time. Cool. Number eight is self-care. Now we've talked about connecting with Andrew today for wellness and all the different support services that are offered there. But in the self-care for today, I'd love just to hear quickly and maybe we pop some ideas in the chat to do this. And I'll send you through the slide deck with more resources and ideas and frameworks. But I'd love to hear in the chat what are some things that you do to take care of yourself? Whether it's your physical self, your emotions, there's like a spiritual side to you. Um, if it's mentally, how do you avoid burning out? All those sorts of things. What do you do to make sure you practice self-care? And I want you to imagine whatever you type in this box is something you're going to commit to doing this trimester. So what is something you know work for you, has worked in the past, and you know whatever you type in that box, if I did a little bit more of this, if I stuck to this, if I built a routine around this, this would be really good for me. Going to the gym, going for a run, meditating, journaling, reading, having an ice bath, fishing, telling my wife, she's always right. Mo, you're such a, you're a joker. I like it. You need to find the comedy club on campus. This is good. I've noticed your comments today. Family time, yoga and cricket, drinking water, long works, <laughs> drinking water, beer. Look, you've got to have some balance in life as well. Self-care is all about balance. Taking my dogs for a walk. Awesome. One of the big challenges with self-care often, this big long list, this big list is what 99% of people will do for self-care. And surprise, surprise, it works. If you drink water, if you sleep well, if you go for walks and exercise and you spend time with people you love, life is good. Challenges on building on the focus point, it's easy for things to get in the way. So what I encourage, what I'd love for you to do is, whether you typed it in or if you just scroll back up through those lists of comments, those lists of, yeah, those lists of comments, 
I'd like you to pick one thing off the list and I'd like you to do it today. Now, if it, oh, it might be getting dark after the session, 4.30, depending where we are. In the next 24 hours, I'd like you to pick one thing off that list and I'd like you to do it. But more than that, I'd like you to think about what would it look like if, whether you do it tonight, whether you do it tomorrow morning, what if we made that time of the week non-negotiable self-care time? So if you go for a walk tomorrow at 11 a.m., what if for this trimester, every Wednesday at 11 a.m., you went for a walk? If it's you've got that best friend, you've got that mom, you've got that family member, what if every Wednesday was when you went out for coffee with them, you had breakfast, you gave them a call? If it's exercising, if it's something physical, what if every Wednesday or every Tuesday evening you did that? Now, for some of you, you're like, sweet, I entered beer and chocolate. Does that mean every Wednesday I can have beer and chocolate? Maybe. If that's it, if on a Tuesday night, you say, you know what, if I do Monday, Tuesday, if I wake up early, I do my studies, I watch my lectures. If by Tuesday, my week's going well, can I have a beer and a piece of chocolate? Why not? I don't know if that's medically sound career advice. And before taking any dietary actions, please consult a GP. This is meant as information, not advice necessarily. But what's something you could do in the next 24 hours? Because you'll do it and you'll feel great. And you've all had this experience, five minutes left in this session. I thank you for being here today. We've got a little bit more to cover. Who's ever had that experience where you say, this is where like current Josh is looking at future Josh and it's like, I'm going to make future Josh a better dude. Who's ever had that experience where you say, tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up early and exercise. Who's ever had that experience before? So tomorrow morning, I'm going to get, and zero to 10, if 10 is totally stoked to get out of bed and zero is it's the last thing I want to do. Give me the doona. How excited are you to wake up in the morning and get out of bed and go outside in the cold? Somewhere between zeros and twos, Leonie's got a seven, which I respect. So riddle me this, you wake up, you're not motivated. The last thing you want to do is get up and exercise. You've got low energy. But who's ever had the experience of getting up, making yourself do it, going out, going for a swim, going to the beach, going for a surf, going for a run, going to the gym, meditating, doing yoga. And then afterwards, how do you feel? Zero to 10. Get up and you do it. How do you feel? Universal. Look across the screen. Tens everywhere. You have no energy. You wake up and you use energy. And now you've got energy. It's not what I learned in my engineering degree. It's not how energy is meant to work. We can't wait for self-care to feel motivated. Self-care when everything's going awesome is great. If you get a pay rise and you're like, tonight, I'm going to meditate. It's good for you, buddy, right? It's where Mo Mo's doing this. Great, right? Really easy. We need it most when things are hard. Now, when things are challenging, when redundancies and work and employment and all that stuff, this is when we need self-care. This time in life is, an ex you're like, great. This is an extended of the morning you wake up and it's cold and rainy and you don't want to exercise. We're just in a winter right now, metaphorically. That's what we're in. It happens. It happened in 2008, it happened in the dot-com bubble, it happened in the past before I was alive. It happens and happens and happens and happens and happens. It's nothing new. But COVID's new. Yeah, it is. But then there were flus. You go back 100, 200 years ago, there were heaps of them. Tragic. Every single time, every human life. Don't get me wrong. But these things have happened before. Now's the time we need the things that work. So if it's a beer on a Tuesday night that says, you've been a good boy, Josh, you've done your study, I think that's okay. If it's getting up early and exercising, if it's going for a walk, if it's calling that best friend, if that's your self-care technique and that works for you, can we make it a routine? And just for this one trimester, could we commit to it? So number eight, self-care and energy. More notes in the slide. Number nine, the last thing, time management. Thing I want to share with you when it comes to time management is a calendar. If there's nothing else out of time management, something that I think is just low hanging fruit is getting involved in using a calendar. Now people have different formats. I love a Google calendar. It's in the slides. The thing I love about Google calendar, it has 12 colors. Those 12 colors are the 12 things I value most. So if it's study, if it's work, if it's travel, if it's exercise, if it's self care, I can see them in my calendar. All of us have 168 hours in the week. Every single one of us. You sleep eight nights, eight nights a week. That'd be nice. Sleep eight hours a night, that's 56 hours. You've got 112. Okay, but I also work a full-time job. Okay, that's 40. That's down to 72. We've got time. If we pull out our phones, and often, I often do this with like undergrads, like all 18-year-old all 18 groups, it's great. You bring it out and some of you are like, I am 18, which is great. You pull it out and you look at how much time is spent on our phones and just TikTok alone is often a full-time job. And it's like, but TikTok's free. 
not if you times it by $25 an hour per day and expand that out over a year, it's not free at all. Do that over a lifetime. It's like, you've got a mortgage in this thing. It's not free. There's an opportunity cost. So when we look at our times, have fun, enjoy it. Enjoy this trimester. Enjoy being back at uni. If you're coming back, who's coming back to uni, not for the first time. Awesome. Cool. Welcome back. Have fun. Hopefully you had good memories before. Hopefully you have even better memories this time. If you are back, if you're here for the first time, enjoy that too. Have a lot of fun with it, but use your calendar, not as a, uh, not as a jail, but use it to free you up. Schedule in that study, schedule in your lectures, watch them when they're online. Don't let them get into week six and then you're six weeks behind. It's really easy to do. But those little actions done each week will free you up for that Tuesday night social event or that beer at the pub or that yoga session or that meditation with your friend at the park. Using a calendar can free us up so, 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 so much. So one of the things I challenge you, if you do one favor for me over the next week, or maybe even as your first, when's your first week of classes? Someone shout out at me. Next week. Next week, cool. So next week, 168 hours, see if you can figure out where they go. I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. See if you can figure out where those 168 hours go in the week. Where do you spend that time? How many hours of class? How many hours of study? How many hours of workshops, social events? How many hours of sleep? See if you can map it out. But most of us, not all of us, I know some are working three jobs, two kids, single parents, just making it work and I respect. But even with that, especially with that, when there isn't much time, knowing what time you have, super, super, super valuable. So that 168 hours, can you see over the next week, where do you spend it? And then can we adjust it and make sure you, by the end of this trimester, you're using it as productively as you can, however you define that based on your goals. For today, if there's any questions, anything I can answer in the future, I'll send you through contact emails from today. Um, did, when you logged in today, was there a little sign-in thing on Zoom? Did you have to do a little sign-in thing? Great. So I'll send through, for everyone who signed in today, I'll send the slides straight out to you. I'll also send everything through to um, Cam, Andrew, and the team at the Guild. Everything that we've mentioned today, links, resources, things like that, is all hyperlinked. Also things that I find often help, a whole bunch of different talks, books, TED Talks, things like that. Uh, one thing, especially around standing out, being yourself, not even standing out, but belonging, uh, a book called Lynchpin by Seth Godin. It's a short book, but it's a gem and just says, you being you is the single most strategic thing you could do, which is great. And we mentioned Brene Brown before as well. So her TED Talk's linked in there. So if you haven't heard of Brene Brown, I, I think you'll love her. She's a gem. The final thing for today, uh, contact details are up on the screen. I'm going to share in the chat function very, very quickly. Uh, a feedback link. So if you are open to just giving a quick little line of feedback with lots of university events, you'll often be asked for feedback, helps us improve, helps make sure you've got the best speakers, the most engaging content. We want to know if this was a good use of your time. Did you learn something? Are you glad you came? How can we make it better? What do you want more of, less of? All that sort of stuff. And then I'll send it through to the Guild team. So whether it's me or anyone else in the future, while you're at Griffith, you're getting the absolute best experience we can possibly curate for you. So something you liked, we'd love to hear it. Something we could improve on, we'd love to hear that too. Um, and of course, if I can help you with anything in the future, contact details and whatnot are all there. So if you could, if you take a quick minute to fill that in, that would be amazing. It's in the chat, just this link up the top, bit.ly forward slash cc underscore a week. Formally, that's the end of today. Sorry, I went two minutes over on you. If... You've got something to rush off to right now, by all means, thank you for coming along. Feel free to log off. Thank you for being here. I hope there's something in there that was valuable for you. Um, if you're interested in hanging around, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, um, by all means, I'd love to hear what's on your mind. Very happy to hang out for 15 minutes or so if you want to connect with one another or share any comments, ask any questions um, or double back on anything we've discussed today. So if you, do, if you are off, thank you for coming. I appreciate you. And if you want to hang around for 10 or 15, um, feel free to jump in, ask any questions. What's, what's on your mind? Thanks, Josh. That was really great. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Terry. Thanks for coming along. And if you're silent because you're giving thorough, thoughtful, constructive criticism and feedback from today, that is brilliant too. We love that. We know if, if, I, if I email you out a survey link, it'll just die in the inbox. So we'll try to make sure we capture it in the session too. That'd be awesome.
Any thoughts, questions, comments? What's on your mind, friends? Checking out this chat function as well. Hi, Josh. Hi. How are you? Yeah, um, thanks for having us. Um, it was a lot better than I expected. Oh, that's like, good to hear. That's totally cool. Uh, Amama, um, Amama, is that correct? Amama? What, yeah. um, what, if you remember one thing from today, what do you think the thing you'll remember will be? Um, I think the most important, I mean, all of, this, all of it was important, but um, one Appreciate thing that, that. In, I've heard this before that they say um, that success is on the other side of fear. Yes. Which you explained very well. And the other thing was, I mean, and the other thing was the focus part. Mm. that you have to keep your focus on different things and a lot of times things that are not important at all takes all of our focus like TikTok. <laughs> yes yeah so if you just can't focus on your life i mean like important things i can you can have a balanced lifestyle and a good lifestyle a balance and a good life i mean like mm. and then be successful mm -hmm. What's because a lot of times you look at uh, successful people they have very simple and productive life, mm. which is not complicated. It's just balanced. And I think that's it. I think you've hit on something there too. Simple equals productive. Yeah. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite principles. And I only ever started doing this when I started in the workforce and I've still got it on my phone right now. I wonder if I could even show you is I graduated and I worked for this guy and he was really, really interesting. And he was like a big Queenslander construction guy. And he always used to say, it was construction. He always used to say the first rule of construction is dot, dot, dot. And so, you know, there was a million of them. And one of them was like, the first rule of construction is don't trust an engineer. And I was an engineer and I was like, well, that's great advice. It was actually really good advice. Um, and then he kept saying them. So eventually I started writing them all down and I just realized they were really like insightful principles. It was like, the first rule of construction is measure twice, cut once. I'm like, that's really helpful for a bunch of different things. And so like I started writing them down. And then ever since then, I've kept this big long list of the first rule is, and then whenever I find a good quote or something that I like, I write it down. And one of the ones that I come back to the most, probably top three ever, is this idea of subtract rather than add to solve a problem. So often we have a problem like, oh, what else can I add to my life to fix this? What else do I need to buy to make this problem go away? Um, and for me, I've often found if I cut things out, if I just simplify things, like if I'm stressed, I had a really like anxious moment maybe a week and a half ago. I just had three big projects and I was like, oh, have I bitten off more than I can chew? And I pulled out my diary and I said, what are the three things I want to achieve today? And I broke my calendar down into three, three hour chunks. I'm like, if I just get these three things done, that'll be a good Monday. And at the end of the day, I did them and I was like, okay, I'm all right. And then the next day I was like, I'll do that again. And then by the end of the Tuesday, I'm like, no, no, I've got this, I'm back. But like, I needed that to simplify. Um, and so, yeah, that's a, it's a really interesting, I like your insight there of, simple and productive i think i think there's a causal link there just um regarding that i have one more thing to share can you please. hear me yeah please yeah if it. anyone else doesn't want to talk then you can take this opportunity otherwise i'll continue that's cool go for it we've got a few minutes okay. share something go okay for it. um so something i have experienced my seniors and i have also heard a lot of um successful youtubers who are great students as well so they say um, a lot of people spend hours and hours constructing, like like planning their days, their weeks, their months, okay? And nobody sticks to anything. They just get out of it. So, and I have done that yes. too. <laughs> a lot. I've done that a lot. And the thing I find is that when you plan your day, you plan every single minute, as, as you said, don't cage yourself into your um, plan. We always do that. We end up doing that. Mm. How about... Um, this is something everybody says and I have followed their advice and yes, I, it works. How about you just look at your day and some things just improve a little bit and just keep it simple and keep it easy. That's, that's all you got to do. Just improve one thing at a time. Uh, start from, for example, sleep, you know, yeah. start sleeping at a time and then just um, a little bit of working, uh, like whatever you want to work on, maybe just um, your studies or like whatever it is. Okay, it's just just simple. Look yeah. at your own self, not at others' life. You know, yeah. like I we do that. that. We plan our day and then and just nothing. One, 
one of the things that's really helped me there is this is a great tip I got from someone once was I always tried to use first person when I had these thoughts. So I found myself when I was, when I was younger, I always used to say you or everybody or people. And I always made it about others. And I realized one of the best techniques to help me grow was saying, where have I fallen short against the principles that literally I'm teaching you, you all today. So like one of the things I do whenever I finish these workshops is I always, when I'm at my best, not always, but I strive to go back through the notes and go, okay, Josh, of these nine things you just taught today, which one of these are you not living up to, to the highest level? And so you're right. People do it. And that like common sense is not common thing. There's all this great advice out there. But for me, something that's really helpful is I'll go back through this and I'll go, okay, like self-care, Josh, what did you do for self-care today? And it's like, okay, I went for a walk this morning. Okay. That's good. What about, you know, internal locus of control? Did I blame anyone for anything in my life today? I'm like, no, I think that was okay. And I'm like, what about my focus? And I'm like, Ooh, I got really distracted there for that hour. And so like that little self auditing process, I think is a really fine balance between being really kind to yourself and not beating yourself up because that doesn't help, mm -hmm. but also keeping yourself accountable. And so for me, one of, I'm not saying this is your struggle, but for me, one of my biggest struggles is going, how do I be really kind to myself and accepting? And how do I keep myself accountable and do the things I say that I'm going to do? So it's a always a balancing act. Yes. Oh, that's great. Mm. I, uh, in terms of that, we should also start using, I mean, I should also start using I and not you in the conversations. <laughs> it's, and it's hard sometimes. Um, I, I personally find it hard sometimes. So even then I'm catching myself, um, but I found it really helpful. I found, cause then I go, I'm always going, Oh, where am I falling short of the things I believe rather than, cause it's easy to find other people. Like you just look at any politician. It's like, well, there's 17 things they're doing wrong. And then you're like, if you were the prime minister, how would you handle COVID? I'm like, Oh, I don't know. I don't want to do that. That seems really hard. You're like, exactly. So sometimes the mirror for me is a, is a good judge. Um, mm. Yeah, that's a good way. Mm. Thanks for sharing that. Amma. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Gavin said engineers never use I. <laughs> that's too funny. I guess that you've been uh, once bitten twice shy by an engineer there, Gavin. That's funny, my friend. Several times. Yes, it's good. <laughs> Cool. Friends, thank you all for jumping in today. Thanks for hanging back for 10 minutes. Um, and thanks for your time as well, Gavin. Um, obviously, if we can help with anything, just sharing those contact details as well. Um, jump aboard with the Guild, check it out, um, see everything that's coming up. Andrew uh, and the absolutely wonderful Cameron are both here with us today. So make sure you connect, follow them, stay in touch. Um, and if there's anything I can help with in the future, by all means, send through a message, uh, right back to the email. Um, and I wish you all the best for this trimester. I'd love to hear how you go. If you have a great trimester, if you're having a great week, Shoot me through a message at any time and we'll, um, I'd love to chat. Nice little surprise, the orientation. Love that, Anthony. That's really, really cool to hear. I'm going to stop the recording there. So if you're watching the recording in replay, bye my friends. Have an amazing trimester. I hope you've had a great trimester when you're watching this.